Welcome to session 157 of Scanner School. Today we're talking about Uniden's Close Call versus Whistler's Spectrum Sweeper. Now again, all the session notes can be found online on our website at scannerschool.com slash session 157. Before we start this week's podcast, I'd like to take a moment to thank our Patreon supporters. Patreon is a month-to-month sponsorship platform. We have three different support tiers, each with different benefits. But the most valuable tier is our $5 a month tier. This equates to sponsoring the podcast for about a dollar per episode. Now, not only do our $5 Patreon supporters receive the podcast early, but they also receive a commercial-free version of the podcast delivered directly to their podcast player. Some may say that the included squelchy sticker pack that is mailed to your home is the best benefit of the $5 level, but I think it's the community or the club that is growing at this level. You see, we meet once a month on Zoom, and we have a roundtable discussion about scanning, ask questions, offer advice. Some of the members are answering other people's questions, and we just talk with our fellow scanner school classmates. This is an exclusive group for our $5 Patreon members. Now, again, if all this wasn't enough at that level, you'll also receive discounts to upcoming Scanner School courses and offerings. Now, you can help support Scanner School by going to www.scannerschool.com slash Patreon or www.scannerschool.com slash support. Now, I'd like to thank all of our Patreon supporters at all levels, and they are Brian King, Buzz Gold, Chris Paris, Craig Harper, Dan, Ed Walsh, Eddie K, Edward Dufour, Glenn Bryden, Guy Lee, James Felling, James Peruta, Jeff Block, Jenny Taylor, Jim Heinrich, John Goldenberg, Ken Newberry, Kenneth Fowler, Kevin Zwicky, Lenny Bauer, Mark Thompson, Mark Beebe, Michael Kroger, Paul Teal, Raymond Hill, Richard Armstrong, Ronnie Bach, Sal Marandola, Tim Mazza, Todd Glendie, and William R. Can. Now let's start the podcast. Welcome to The Scanner School a podcast dedicated to the scanner radio hobby. Class is about to begin. Here is your host, Phil Lichtenberger. Welcome to Scanner School. We teach you everything you need to know about the scanner radio hobby. My name is Phil Lichtenberger, and my radio call sign is W2LE. Now, again, today's podcast is brought to you by our Patreon supporters. I want to thank each and every one of my Patreon supporters for their continued support. This podcast would not be here without you guys. And also, my website, East Coast Pagers. You are emergency alerting specialist. You can check us out at eastcoastpagers.com for all of your paging needs. So again, welcome back to the podcast. Two weeks ago, if you listened to that one on session 155, we were talking about Uniden's close call feature and how it works. And last week on session 156, we talked about Whistler's Spectrum Sweeper also known as the Signal Stalker. We went through each one of those in their own dedicated podcast. Well, today we're going to put a pretty bow on it because it is the holiday season, and we are going to put them head-to-head. Which one works best and which one would I prefer? That's a good one. So before we put them to the test, I want to quickly review what basically we're talking about here and how you can use it and what each one is and is not. Then at the end, we'll put everything side-to-side and see which one excels, which one's full shorts with our verdict as well. So again, for the benefit of those that haven't listened to session 155 and 156, we're going to go through what close call is, what signal stalker is, really briefly. All right, I invite you to go back and listen to those podcast episodes and pick up on what they are in detail. But just so you understand where this podcast is for this week, if you didn't listen to those two sessions, you'll have a review. Now, for anybody that's sick of listening to that, jump to the other side of the break right now where we're going to go right into the head-to-head, all right? So those are your two options. This is like a choose-your-own-adventure podcast, okay? So with that, what is Uniden's close call and what is Whistler's Signal Stalker or Spectrum Sweeper? Well, they're kind of two different names for the same functions. Your scanner can be set up in a mode where it will hunt out frequencies that are stronger than a set value over the scanner's noise floor. So basically, if a signal is close by, your scanner should lock onto it and let you know what that frequency is. So again, each one of these has a different way of doing things, right? So let's table that for a second. Let's just talk to you why you'd want to use close call, why you'd want to use signal stalker or spectrum sweeper. Now again, in the whistler side, it's the same thing for two different, it's the same, two different names for the same function is what I'm trying to say here. 
So they changed the naming on it, but it's the exact same thing. All right. So let's let's just say the way you could use this. Now I'm gonna go with the same examples I gave in the previous two podcast episodes where I'm not too far from my local airport, right? And I also live really close to a couple parkways here. Now I've used close call in the past on the unit and product to listen to helicopters as I see them fly overhead. Now again, these are stationary helicopters. Helicopters that are obviously sitting there because something had happened directly below them and they're doing news reports on it or or traffic updates and those kinds of things, right? These aren't helicopters that are just passing through on their flight pattern or their flight path, right? These are there for an active reason. Now, I'm also not talking about police traffic either. These are news style helicopters, okay? So again, seeing a helicopter fly overhead, I put my scanner in close call. I wait a little while and all of a sudden the scanner beeps and I can hear the pilot coming overhead talking back to either the news desk or wherever else they were talking to, okay? There was another time too, right around this time, this a uh, couple of years back when there was a blimp that didn't have enough uh, power to overcome some headwinds. And uh, again, I can hear this blimp struggling. I can see it go kind of up and down. I can hear the engines revving. And again, I'm in my living room and I hear this going on, right? So... Again, I grab the scanner, I put it on close call mode, and what do I hear? I hear the pilot of the blimp talking to his ground crew, his chase crew, and he basically comes over the air and says, look, there's a park down there, or there's a uh, ball field. Uh, looks like it's behind a school. I'm going to go ditch the aircraft there. In other words, he wasn't making it back to the airport. He was just going to go down. And that's what they did. And of course, makes the cover of the news, makes local news, right, the whole deal, and you know, I got to hear it because I grabbed my scanner, put it in close call mode, and I was able to hear them directly. So again, was this isn't something I would have been able to find if I was just listening to the uh, the tower for the closest airport, right? These, these this is something different here, right? So where else could you use close call or signal stalker or uh, spectrum sweeper, right? Well, if you want to use it, say maybe at a sporting event like a NASCAR, you know, or sanctioned event, right? There is a close NASCAR licensed track that's not too far from me. And, um, you know, the cars are pretty close and the pit crews are right there. So I don't see why if you couldn't bring your scanner with you, if you can pick up what's going on between the pit crews and the drivers, right? That's that's pretty much something that could happen there. Uh, you could even find something, say, at a construction site or what I like to do is use it in a mall, right? You can use it there and, and find either security or uh, stock runners or stuff like that that's going on. Uh, that's to say, too, you can also take it to... A whole, like a Home Depot or any place else that uses these little bubble pack radios. And again, bubble pack radios, we're talking about like FRS radios and kind of stuff like that. So it makes it very interesting. There's a lot of stuff out there that um, that we can pick up on, right? It's just a matter of finding them. And, and using tools like Close Call or Signal Stalker, or again, uh, Spectrum Sweeper, same thing, right? These are all ways that we can find out what's going on here. So again, what we're talking about here, though, is visual distances, right? We are basically line of sight from what it is that we are trying to pick up again. So Again, what can't you do with Signal Stalker, Spectrum Sweeper, Close Call, right? Well, this isn't for road trips, right? This isn't for like as you're driving through any town USA that all of a sudden you're going to pick up any town USA's police department and their fire department and their road crews and uh, all the schools in the district or the EMS runs, right? No, they've got to be right on top. They've got to be really close in order for you to pick up on it, right? It's got to be basically you know a couple car lengths away, a couple hundred feet. That's what we're talking about here, okay? So these these are really why close call it has its name right because it's close call right things that happen right there where else would i be using this on the road though again we talked about it earlier construction crews right if you're driving down the road and you've got a one lane highway either direction and there's a road crew doing tree trimming or line work or something like that right guardrail inspection whatever it is then you've got to close one lane of the road well obviously two directions can't go by one lane so they will close off one lane and let you know traffic go in one direction they'll stop that traffic and let traffic go the other direction and how do they communicate well they the flagmen right they know that they can see each other's signs which one is going to be a stop and which one's not going to be a stop but again they may call each other on the radio and say hey i got a line of cars here you know can we move these guys along sooner so that's the kind of thing, right? You you can kind of expect to hear on there. Even also, too, I was reading online that you may find out some police departments are using other channels they shouldn't be using as a talk around channel. Not to specifically call out police departments, but some departments, generalization here, uh, just may pick a random frequency and just start transmitting on it, right? Not to say it doesn't happen, not to say it's whatever, but you'd be surprised. That's why we have scanners and we do things with searches like this, okay? So again, another thing you do with it is pass the time, right? You can, when you're sitting there holding the coats and holding the bags while your wife's around shopping, uh, you can have one of these scanners going, just listen to what's going on. So 
kind of helps you pass the time. Even if you're sitting in the car, just waiting for your kids to get in from whatever it's, you know, they're at the mall, whatever. So how do we use it? Well, close call feature basically has three active modes. You can dedicate the scanner to just using close call, right? That's just close call mode. You can set it up so that close call is only active if your scanner is currently on a non-active channel. Basically, it's not monitoring something right now. And that would be called close call DND or close call do not disturb because you don't want to disturb the active transmission. And there's also close call priority. And close call priority is basically that the scanner is going to check for a close call every two seconds interrupts any transmission and it just sounds like you pick a fencing and a lot of people accidentally put this scanner in that mode and it drives them nuts so if you have a c with a bullseye in it on your screen you're basically in close call mode okay so what about spectrum sweeper well spectrum sweeper is a little bit more involved to get into sometimes you got to uh, go into the menu system and you got to go into search mode then you have to go into spectrum sweeper you can turn on the features a special feature or a zero matic tuning and I, I like doing zero matic tuning and the special features or there's also a key sequence to get into it, like on my TRX-1, it's function 3. It's not labeled on the screen, that's how you do it, but if you read the book, that's how you do it. On my Pro 106, again, this is a GRE-flavored uh, Radio Shack scanner, uh, that would be function and then the uh, search bar. Is it the search button? No, it's the scan button. It's, again, it's got a little bullseye in the, in the scene in the middle. And that will put you into close call on that scanner. So... Different radios have different ways of getting into this close call or spectrum sweeper mode. But again, they all kind of do the same thing. They, they show you what's out there in close proximity to where you physically are located. So now that we've got a quick rundown of what spectrum sweeper is or signal stalker and also what close call is, let's talk about which one works the best on the other side of this break. Did you know there are ways to help support the Scanner School podcast that doesn't take any time or any extra money on your part? If you go to scannerschool.com slash support, you will find we have several ways that you can continue to do your online shopping and help support us. We have links to Amazon. If you click on our link before you go to Amazon, anything you buy from there will help support Scanner School. Now, if you're in a market for a brand new scanner, an antenna, other accessories, we have links to Scanner Master, where you can not only purchase a scanner and accessories, but you can also get your radio programmed. And by clicking on our link before you buy, you are helping to support the podcast. Now, if you're in a market for software, we have links to Butel. And if you want something new to you, we also have links to eBay. Again, just go to scannerschool.com slash support before you make your purchases, and you are helping to support Scanner School at no additional cost to you. This session of Scanner School is sponsored by East Coast Pagers. Now, East Coast Pagers is one of my online companies, and we are a Unication, Apollo, and Swiss phone dealer serving the North American market. Now, if you're looking for a personal use pager or one for your department, we can get you a quote at the very best prices. So why does a company like East Coast Pagers support Scanner School? I think that every Scanner Radio user should at least put one pager in their collection of radios. The reason why is very simple. It frees up your scanner to just do scanning, and then you have one radio that's dedicated to your local fire activity. Now, with a pager, you can have voice storage. You can do tone outs. You can keep it silent. You can go back the next day and listen to what you've missed overnight. It's more than you can do with an out-of-the-box scanner. And with today's pagers having multiple frequencies and even having multiple channels in a scan list, like the Unication G1 can do eight channels in a scan list. It has 64 memory channels, and out of the the box, it comes with 11 minutes of stored voice and a desktop charger. The G2s to G5s, they do P25 phase one and phase two in simulcast environments with stored voice, paging on conventional NP25. Oh, and they're upgradable too to DMR type one and type two. They are more rugged than today's consumer based scanners. And with a pager like a Swiss phone S quad, you won't even realize you're wearing one. It'll help keep you informed as to what's going on in your neighborhood. So again, eastcoastpagers.com or contact me directly, phil at eastcoastpagers.com. Do you have a new scanner? You're having problems understanding how it works? Maybe you're new to the entire Home Patrol database of programming and you can't figure out Sentinel. Did you get a new SDR and you're trying to figure out how to install it or you want to learn how to use Unitrunker, DSD+, Plus, maybe set up a Pioware or even just make some changes and you don't understand how the system and the equipment works? The podcast might be great for you, but maybe you need a little bit more of one-on-one -on -one help with setting something up. I'm available to do just that with you with our private 
tutoring sessions. You can book me online by going to scannerschool.com slash consulting for a one-hour session. And it's great because we can actually share computer screens remotely, and I can guide you through step-by-step as if I was sitting right next to you. So again, book me for an hour at scannerschool.com slash consulting for your scanner radio one-on-one tutoring session. National Communications Magazine is your personal library of scanner, CB, GMRS, FRS, MURS, and 2A radio articles written by the best minds in the business over the past three decades. Your NatCom personal online access account allows you to download the newest issues of America's Hobby Radio Magazine, as well as back issues too. So visit natcommag.com to download your free sample issues and sign up today. That's natcommag.com for National Communications Magazine. Okay, so what we are waiting for here is the side-by-side comparison. So if you skipped over and you are here now, then welcome to the second part of this podcast. If you got your review, hopefully that brings you up to speed so that you know what we're talking about here. So side-by-side comparison. Now, again, close call, spectrum sweeper, or signal stalker, two different methods of giving you the same results, and they both have their pros and cons. So I did a really simple test here. I grabbed my SDS-100. I also grabbed my Whistler TRX-1. I picked both of these because they are the current flagship models for both companies. It's the top of the line scanners, handheld scanners for both companies, okay? Both scanners had a fresh charge on the battery. And side by side, they were used with what you get out of the box, basically meaning stock antenna. No aftermarkets, okay? Nothing less, nothing more. Now, on the transmitting side of this test, we took an FRS radio, bubble pack radio, and I parked it on channel 14. Now, I picked channel 14 because this is one of the low-power FRS channels. The effective rating power, the ERP on this frequency, is half a watt. Now, again, why do we pick this? Because to simulate if you were, say, in a mall and you had walls to go through, right? Again, I'm testing outside. So I am taking you down to a worst-case scenario, right? Which which would be the worst-case scenario here? So what we did basically was I started on the same corner as my wife. I had her key up the FRS radio, give a count, and we would see how long it would take for the scanner to lock on and, and catch up, right? And then we took it to 50 feet, then 100 feet, 150, 200 feet, etc. Until neither scanner worked, basically. So we had three variables here. We have a variable of speed. Basically, how long did it take the scanner to lock on? We have distance. Basically, how far could we get from the source before the scanner would no longer pick up? And then we had technology, meaning analog, DMR, P25, etc. So let's talk about speed. Now, this is where the Uniden close call excels in. Basically, as soon as we keep up the FRS radio, the Uniden scanner beeped and let us know that there was an active channel nearby. And it also tuned into it right away. The Whistler, on the other hand, took some time to get there because the Whistler is searching from lowest frequency to highest frequency, basically in a search mode. And you can actually see in the screen that it's incrementing the values. Now, the way that the Whistler product worked is that it goes up in one megahertz increments so that it's going by pretty quickly. And then once it gets something in that sweep at one megahertz, then it goes into what's called the the zeromatic tuning, and it really fine-tunes itself so it's directly on center. Now, this is great on the Whistler product line because sometimes on the Whistler, on the unit in line rather, on the unit in line, you have an issue where you could be off frequency. So if the signal's too close, too strong, too wide, right? The wrong frequency will be decoded as the close call frequency. I've actually had that happen a couple of times. Whereas the Whistler will make sure it fine tunes itself. Okay. But again, the Whistler is slow. There were times where it would take 30 seconds to find the close call frequency. In me, that is a major drag. So even though the unit in might be off frequency, it is rapid. It is fast. It is almost instantaneous. The winner in this category has to go to unit in. Okay, the next category. The next category is going to be in distance. How far away from the actual transmitter source will the scanner work? So again, we started at zero feet, went 50, 100, et cetera, et cetera. Well, the TRX-1 worked blue, blew the Uniden scanner out of the water on this one. After 100 feet, the Uniden scanner no longer picked up FRS channel 14. The Whistler scanner had no problem. It kept picking it up, and we kept walking away, 150. 200 feet, it still worked. Even 
really interesting is that the Whistler scanner would also detect a DMR system on the water tank that I could see from where I was standing. Water tank, according to Google Earth, was about 2,000 feet away from me. But again, we are looking at something that's a couple hundred feet tall at this point regarding we can't really compare this, right, in, in a good situation like this because we're looking at same plane here, right, zero feet to zero feet. But again, it does prove the fact that the Whistler did find the FRS radio at 200 feet out, but it also found the water tank, okay? That's my unit and scanner did neither on that one. So what's the verdict on this one? The Whistler takes the top spot on this one. So now we're tied. We're tied one to one. Here's the tiebreaker here, the technology test. Now, the scanner has DMR in it, has right, has an upgrade for that. You would think that the scanner would work fine in DMR in my unit. In. The TRX-1 has DMR built in. Okay, so we've got level playing fields here. The way that the Whistler and the unit in do DMR are slightly different. In fact, it's, it's usually different when it comes to trunking. When it comes to trunking, the Whistler actually scans through the channels, whereas the unit in basically knows how to decode and, and jump through it in regular trunk tracking when it comes to DMR. Well, I think this actually comes into a uh, stronghold when it comes to the whistle line. Because I took my Alenco DMR radio and I keyed it up on the same desk as the scanner. The unit in, nothing. Didn't even see it was there. I mean, I can see that on the Spectrum's graph on the close call that I had something strong in that search range. But it never stopped to say there was anything there. The whistle, on the other hand, stopped, identified as DMR past audio, showed the color code and the radio ID or the talk group. It showed some ID on there. I don't recall off the top of my head now. But the Whistler won in this category as well. So is this the best way to find a closed signal? No, it's not. What would I do if I actually had some time to do this maybe all right way? Well, I would do this with an SDR to be honest with you. Because I can see the spectrum, I can see what's out there. And again, an SDR hooked up to your computer will give you whatever the SDR can show you. The cheap Nulek SDR dongles, the ones that are $30, right? They can show you 2.5 megahertz. So I can go through a 2.5 megahertz chunk in the waterfall in the spectrum display and see what's out there at a, at a glance. If I use an AirSpy, an AirSpy can show you 10 megahertz, right? That's, that's the whole FRS band. That's the whole public safety band, basically, right? You can go from 150 to 160. Well, it's, well, it's not the whole thing, but, you know, it's enough of a chunk to see what's out there at any given time, regardless if it's P25, NXDN, uh, DMR, analog, right? You're going to see that spike there. Now, I'm going to just set this in here really quick. I'm not going to make a big stink about it, but I've got pre-registration open up now for my SDR training course. You want to check it out, go to scannerschool.com slash courses. We're going to take you right there. It's pre-registration, which means the course is not public yet, but it's ready to take registrations. We are getting that much closer to publish publishing this course. So if you're interested in my SDR training course, I invite you to go to scannerschool.com slash courses. So going back to the winner here, what is the winner? Winner, winner, chicken dinner. I have to give it to the Whistler product line. Now, again, for some of you, that might be shocking news to you, but I did the homework here. Two out of three, the Whistler product came out better. I have to give Uditin, though, a strong runner-up because of how fast the close call works. Not being able to find it for 30 seconds really annoyed me about the Whistler product line. But it worked at the furthest distance, zeromatic tuning, and the fact that it pulled in DMR immediately. That's great. I don't know how well it works with P25 or NXDN. I don't have the resources to test those. But it did pick those up as a pickup DMR, which is a digital mode. So I'm going to have to say, if I had to pick, again, just one radio to take with me, I think I'd take my TRX-1. But why not take them both? Why not? There's nothing like carrying $1,000 in radios through the mall, not to look suspicious during the holiday season. Or your laptop with a bunch of wires hanging out of it as you're doing spectrum sweeping on an SDR. <laughs> so with that, let's give ahead a big old round of applause to Whistler for their TRX-1, their signal stalking technology. I think that this is definitely the best way to go when you're trying to find a signal that's close by. And uh, it may take some time, but I think you're going to get the right hit every single time. All right, guys. How do we do on this one? Let us know. You can always go to scannerschool.com slash session 157. Let us know which one you like the best. Do you agree with my results? Leave your comments under the podcast episode there. Also, don't forget to check out our, our Zello net every week, every Tuesday night scannerschool.com slash Zello. And again, I want to help more people 
with the Scanner Radio Hobby. I can only do that with your help. So please share this podcast with somebody else that you know is in the Scanner Radio Hobby. Share the podcast in your Facebook groups, in an email, wherever. In fact, I'm even now putting the podcast on YouTube. So if you're listening to this on YouTube, go ahead and share and thumbs up, etc. This way more people can find the podcast. So again, I remind you, we got pre pre uh, registration going on now, scannerschool.com slash courses for our SDR training course. And we are now getting ready to wrap up the year. So for everybody out there, I want to say happy, happy holidays, happy Hanukkah, happy Christmas, happy whatever it is that you celebrate. Have a happy new year. We got one more episode coming up next week, which will roll out at the end of the year finally. And then it's on to an amazing 2021. Boy, I sound like somebody like that when I say I don't I it's going to be the best year ever. <laughs> Everybody knows this. <laughs> but <laughs> anyway, 2021 has got a lot of stuff in store for Scanner School. We're going to ramp things up. I am uh, pre-planning quite a bit of activity. And uh, hopefully we can get it all out there for you guys. All right, guys. 73. We'll talk to you all next week. Bye-bye.